session is going to be recorded and uh, we are going to be going over a couple of house rules. So with these house rules, we just want to um, reiterate that we want to treat everyone in this space with respect and kindness. So as if we were in a physical space, we want to treat this online space uh, very safe and, and know that you all here are included and welcomed. We wouldn't be here if it wasn't for all of you uh, beautiful people today. So just letting you all know that if any actions do uh, go against these guidelines, uh, please know that you will be blocked. So to kind of take away all those house rules, let's go ahead and get started. So for today's roadmap, we are going to uh, get to know the Triton Transfer Hub. We are going to be having a couple of our peer coaches who will be panelists today. So you'll have an opportunity to get to know them and they will introduce themselves as well. We also have some transfer student success peer coaches who are working behind the scenes to go ahead and help answer your questions in our chat. So make sure to ask any questions um, as our presentation is going along. We also have some questions that were asked before our presentation today and we will make sure to get to every question as much as we possibly can in an effective and efficient time. So let's go ahead and move to the next slide. Thank you so much. So with the Triton Transfer Hub, our peer coaches are available for questions, big and small, with our transfer specific social events and professional and academic workshops. So we also have blogs, we have spotlights, we have multiple resources and new student guides found right on our website. And then make sure to check our newsletter. So we are hearing that you all want to get notified every week. So I know it says in our PowerPoint bi-weekly, but we will find a way to make sure that you are getting our newsletter every week for transfer specific opportunities and events. Next slide, please. So more events are coming up. Be sure to check us out on social media with our newsletters. We also have a live stream. We have Microsoft Teams. We have multiple ways for you to really get to know us. We have appointments with our transfer student success peer coaches who are so eager and willing to help you with anything and everything as you start with the brand new fall quarter. Awesome. So just to let you all know, we have our Black Transfer Student Welcome Reception that is coming up really soon. It's going to be on Wednesday. Oh, that's today, September 30th from 5 to 6 p.m. Make sure to save the date and time. If you are open and available, we would love to welcome you all to UCSD through our Black Transfer Student Welcome Reception. And then make sure to get involved with the Triton Transfer Hub and learn more about ways to get involved, especially with this quarter and beyond. We have multiple opportunities, whether you're interested in undergraduate research, maybe you want to have an internship, maybe you want a student leadership position, whether that's paid or unpaid, our Triton Transfer Hub is here to help and get your back. So make sure to double check with us on that. So these are our, our peer coaches. So you can see over here, we have uh, several of them. We are wearing our masks just to go and show our support to keep everyone safe and healthy during this time. We know there are a lot of events that are going on. So we just wanted to show you a quick picture of who we are. So question and answer time, woo! All right, so, so let's go ahead and ask. Um, Giselle, can I interject exactly. really quick? Of course you can. Okay, so I know many of you are here. One of the reasons why you might be here is because we are going to be doing an opportunity drawing for Triton Transfer Masks. Um, please know that we are taking note of attendance and um, at the end of this week, we're going to be doing our opportunity drawing. So keep your eyes on your inbox um, for next week for more information on that in case you are selected. That's all I have, Giselle. Oh, you're still muted. Is there any way we could see the next slide? Thank you so much, Jackie. All right, so make sure to follow us. We have a link here that's perfect for you all to use your smartphones so you can take a look at our social media. 
So if we could move on to the next slide, Jackie, that would be wonderful. That's the end of the presentation, Giselle. Oh, okay. Let's go ahead and get started with the questions. So with the first question that we have, uh, it is, what should I expect during my first quarter at UCSD? What other transfer resources are offered? So um, go ahead and put the question in quick. the chat if that's helpful. Awesome. That's, that's a great question. Really quick, just so you all, if it helps, um, for our panelists, um, if everyone wouldn't mind turning their camera off, and our panelists, if you can leave your camera on. And what we'll do is um, quick introductions uh, of the panelists uh, to get things started. You know, your name, your college, your major. Um, so our panelists today are uh, Bruce, uh, Caesar, Ka, and Malik. And so uh, again, if you are a panelist, leave your camera on. If you are not a panelist, you can turn your camera off at this time. Um, so you can all see the panelists. So um, Giselle, if you want to start with introductions, and then I think uh, I think going into questions is a, is a great plan. Sounds wonderful. So would anyone like to go first to introduce themselves? Make sure to introduce your name, uh, your pronouns, what college you're in, what your major is, and then a fun fact about yourself. And I'll go ahead and post that in the chat as well. I'll go first. So hi, hello, everyone. My name is Cesar Cipuno. My pronouns are he, his, him, el, and my major is sociology, and a fun fact about myself is that I enjoy painting. Um, yeah, I just have popcorn to you or someone go next. Well, I can go next. Hi, everybody. My name is Bruce. My, uh, maybe you saw me like last quarter on the web website or Instagram live stream. I'm a peer coach for this quarter and for, I'm a formal student assist at our Trans and Transfer Hub. And I'm same major with Caesar. We both is sociology major. And my pronouns is he, him, his. And fun fact for me, well, I guess I have two. One is like, I really like to photo photograph a lot and also I like cooking. Yep. Also, I'm part of a near college. Oh, I forgot, I'm in Rebel College. <laughs> hey, y'all. Oh. Oh. Yeah, go ahead, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> hey, y'all, my name is Willie Depenia. Uh pronouns he, him, his, uh, returning peer coach. From your college, I transferred from Xavier University of Louisiana, HBCU, from my hometown of New Orleans, Louisiana. And fun fact about me, my favorite holiday is Mardi Gras. More than Christmas, more than Thanksgiving. Halloween's a close second. <laughs> nice. Um, so hi everyone, my name is Ka. I'm a bioengineering, bioengineering major from Warren College, and I transferred from um, Orange. Coast College, I just forgot um, there um, in Orange County. And my pronoun is she, her, hers. Uh, I guess a fun fact about myself is that I'm also a transfer student and um, I would love to hear more about you guys and how you guys are, um, you know, getting used to UCSD like how I used to. Thank you all for the lovely introduction. So these are our wonderful panelists, our transfer student success peer coaches. So I'm gonna give them a round of applause on my end and I will have the next question, or excuse me, first question. So what should I expect during my first quarter at UCSD? What other transfer resources are offered? Well, for this question, I can give you some idea because as like I'm a new transfer student only for one year, I just transferred last quarter, uh, last year. First quarter is always hard when you change from a semester system to a quarter system. So the first thing I want to share, always, always I share is do a time of management. Write all your stuff out and do the better time of management. That will give you a lot of opportunity and chance to be success, no matter in your academic way or even your, at your UCSD life way. And also for the transfer resource, as like we said, the weekly newsletter, by weekly newsletter, we give you a lot of transfer resource 
all over the campus what we heard from our other departments. They gave you all the stuff, so check that out. And if you want to get more involved with UCSD, my suggestion is like, go to some student organizations. They are really helpful and you can get like involved really, really quick. Yeah. I guess I can give my advice next. I remember when I first entered UCSD, I want to be this, you know, oh my God, new college, new me, and I'll do all the things and it's gonna be great. But um, uh, the transition from semester to quarter, for me was really hard and I I suppose I, I had to drop some units and not gonna go like crazy units like in community college so I guess the one advice I get I give to you guys is you know don't don't put a lot of pressure on yourself it's fine if you guys take one two or even three quarters to get used to the quarter system and that's that's totally fine just go with the pace that you are comfortable with and again like Bruce said you know time management and trying to uh, navigate uh, UCSD. And you guys, remember, you guys are not alone. You guys don't, don't need to navigate UCSD alone. We are here, we transfer peer coach here. You, uh, we will help you. And then I know that every student will get bombarded with like a lot of emails. And in those emails, you know, just take one minute to skim through them. Maybe you find something. That's what I did. I, I skimmed through them. I'm like, oh, wait, wait. Trend, Triton Transfer Hub is um, hiring, and that, that's why I'm here. So yeah, guys, just, you know, just, just don't put a lot of pressure on yourself and try to find opportunities like around you through emails and through your friends, yeah. Um, just to piggyback off of what Kyle was talking about, you're gonna get a lot of emails. You're gonna get more emails than you've ever seen. Um, yeah, so that, that's just gonna happen. Um, don't let it overwhelm you. Quick pro tip, um, in your email settings, just make sure any sort of class emails you get, either direct them to a folder, make sure they get flagged automatically. Please do that, you do not wanna miss those. Um, so just do that, it'll make your life so much easier and less stressful because there's gonna be a lot of emails. Um, there are a lot, there's a lot of stuff going on at UCSD. Um, so it's really easy to get pulled in a lot of different directions because like there's going to be so many student orgs, offices, departments, so on and so forth, just reaching out to you like, hey, hey, come to our info session, come to our general body meeting, come get some free food, so on and so forth. So um, the biggest piece of advice I can kind of give to you is like, set some some clear goals as to what you what you want out of like your first quarter um that'll really help you also uh touching on what uh Bruce was talking about with time management super duper important um one thing that helped me out was like having like a solid morning and night routine and that kind of helped me like organize my days around that um, like I said, there's a lot going on. So at least if you have like some consistency in how you start and end your day, it'll at least like keep, it'll uh, help uh, avoid getting overwhelmed. That's super, super uh, crucial is to have like some sort of like routine to kind of like organize and anchor yourself. Um, other than that, like there's a lot of transfer organizations like Active is a huge one. So that's the all-campus transfer organization. They do a lot of like cool transfer events. Um, if you're a Muir, Muir has the tribe of Muir transfers. So like, that's also pretty cool to tap in with. Um, yeah, so like there's like different student boards that I definitely would recommend. Another resource I would always recommend are the Campus Community Center. We got seven, um, like the Black Resource Center, the Rasa Resource Central, the LGBT uh, Resource Center, the Women's Center, um, Apimeta, which is Asian Pacific Island, Desi American, Middle Eastern programs and services, um, the Intertribal Resource Center and the Cross Cultural Center. Boom, there we go. It's been a minute since I've had to bring those up. But um, those are all of those are really, really great uh, to just like get connected with community here. Um, that's super duper important in UCSD is like kind of finding 
like your like you know like the people that you connect with like you know what I'm saying whether that's community whether that's people you live with whether it's people in your classes or in your major uh, whether that's people that you kind of like share identities with um, that's super duper important during the first quarter because um, those are gonna that's gonna be like the start of your support system and support systems are essential like I cannot stress that enough so yeah that was kind of a long answer but I hope that like kind of gave y'all some things to look out for. I'm going to throw you back off Malik on, on that. So I'd say um, community building. So definitely find your community on, cab, on campus. I know, it's, uh, I know it's hard right now, especially because of everything going on with COVID and stuff. But I guess like the first community that you're already in is the transfer community. So um, I think we are a very special community on campus. And we definitely bring different perspectives and a lot of things like, in that sense. So I feel like um, you're already here take advantage of that. Um, the transfer community is like a very special community, I feel like, and um, just find, just try to like find, get help you find your place in, on campus and definitely do that because I feel like it definitely made all the difference in my transition because um, I had like a very humbling experience <clears throat> transferring to UCSD because I was like doing and excelling very well at CC and you know, coming to UCSD, I knew it was going to be like a rough transition. I knew it was going to like be a change of pace. I knew it was going to be all these things, but I didn't know how to prepare for all these different changes. You know, so I I definitely think that finding your community and finding um, building your network, your social network, um, is something that um, is essential. I feel like to um, excelling your time here at UCSD. Um, other resources offered, we have like, it all really all depends on what you want to get out of UCSD. So we have various things from like finding you an internship to if you want to uh, pursue grad school, we have, we have programs that build you like undergraduate research programs and stuff like that, that can definitely help you like build up your, your resume to make competitive for grad programs. That's whether it's for like med school, law school, um, any type of grad school you're interested in going to, we provide all of that. Um, so I think also finding like communities in that sense is also very essential to like helping you um, uh, be successful for the next few years that you're going to be here. Um, there's another thing, but I lost my train of thought. So I'm gonna leave it at that. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's my two cents. Oh, wait, I found it. I got, got the train of thought back. It's um, also pace yourself. Um, I know we only have two years, um, but or two to three years, depending on what you major. But pacing yourself is something that I also needed to learn because I was trying to take on too much too fast and kind of was trying to bite me in the behind and it was just like I gotta like pick and choose the things I wanted to like you know really like focus my time on so um yeah so that's that's that thank you all for answering that with lovely lovely responses uh we have another question that we have here and it is what was the most jarring thing about the quarter system and how did you overcome it? And I'm going to post this in the chat. I guess I can go first. I had like PTSD experience. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm obviously joking, but um, for me, it went by so, so fast. So, so fast. In fact, that, you know, like, you know, I had that uh, new me, new school, new me kind of mentality. And I was like, oh crap, like after a quarter, I still couldn't do anything. And I, I felt really depressed in myself, like disappointed in myself. Um, but that's not, now I know that it's, that's not a good mentality to go by. Like, it's it's like, what, 10 weeks? Then that's it. Like, you, you, you just, you'll go to class like four times and then you have a quiz. That's so, so fast. So um, yeah, the fatness of it, I guess. Um, but yeah, like my advice to just, 
deal with it is you know take take your quarter to get used to how how fast it goes and then see how you know you can allocate time to to uh, fulfill your classes first and then move on to other things if you feel like that's you know like taking on too much will make you will make you feel bad about yourself so yeah short advice Yeah, for me, the same time, you know, change from like a 16 week semester to directly to a 10 week. And I remember what I did, like now I'm thinking what I did on first quarter, maybe it's like a little bit crazy as I take like, because I was thinking, oh, it, it probably is just like the semester system. So I take five class at the, the first quarter and then boom, I found out it hit me really hard. So that is why I'm finding out how it's important as time management during like the UC system, because it's really quick. It's like, for me, I feel it's like, I just come into the UCSD on the September and then boom, the quarter end. I'm like, I, I didn't like really have time to thinking about like how what's all the system go and it's like this quarter is end. So it's like probably, from like a semester system is more hardest time for me, yeah. And also get some advice for you guys is like kind to choose uh, enough units you thinking you are okay. Like three or four class, that, that's a good amount. Five, maybe later when you really got into, oh, sorry. I don't know who, who calling me all the time. <laughs> so it's like, that's like that is for, for it. Yeah, that is like my suggestion. Choose enough units you feel okay, three to four is okay. Five, maybe later, yeah. Yeah, picking off that, I'm sorry, I will answer again. I remember in community college, I took 23 units in one semester. And I was fine. I was even doing like honors, like clubs, stuff like that. Like I was very active. And then UCSA, it hit me and I dropped back to 12 to 16 units, which is like three to four, four classes without doing any um, extra curricular activity. So like it is really different. The space is, the pace is very different and don't worry, just you, you get back up to speed again. Yeah, so don't worry about that. Just this experience, I, I I think I should share. Um, something that kind of got me was because like there, so like in the semester system, um, I think we can all agree that what you would call it, um, the first two to three weeks, full, cool, you're pretty much just going over the syllabus and meeting your classmates, and then you're getting into a little bit of the material. First round of exams picks up, all right, boom, 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 go through your exam, maybe an essay or something. And then it dips back down for a second. You can kind of get your bearings, see what, what happened. Um, you might have another round, it'll dip back down again before finals, and then it'll kind of pick back up the finals and then you're done. Um, when you get onto the quarter system, those dips do not exist. Um, not at all. Not even, not even slightly. Um, it pretty much just picks up at week three, and then it just stays up finals and you just kind of do this like seven week sprint marathon type thing and it can get pretty exhausting so i'd probably say like that was probably the, the most jarring thing for me like i'm not even gonna lie like because i came in pretty strong like I, I still had a like a really good quarter on um, my first quarter but like like i had like the morning routine going like the morning runs morning workouts and the night routine with the with washing my face and then going to bed on time and like week seven or eight it cracked me so that that was like where my routine started to like uh decompose a little bit and i started to like really like feel like that that quarter system burnout at the end of the quarter and that can really like that can get you so that's like the biggest thing um for me and like that was where like leaning into support systems really came into play um just kind of like taking a step back you know regathering myself 
uh, assessing where I was at and like really having to do that on the fly. Um, but really talking to people just to like remind myself, okay, it's a quarter system, it moves fast. And I think that's where the biggest part of like having a support system leaning on the peers, especially is super duper helpful because like when you see that you're not the only one going through it, when you see like, okay, this isn't like impossible and like, but it's not easy either. And just like kind of having that reminder of like, okay, this is difficult, but like I can do this and I'm not in this alone. I'm not in this by myself. Um, I think that's really helpful into like finding your second win. And so like that, that was kind of how I was able to like revamp and like get through the rest of my quarter and still be able to have a strong first quarter. Um, so yeah, that's, that was like how I overcame like my burnout was like being able to like lean on others and like find like reignite that motivation to like finish strong. Um, so yeah, that, that quarter system burnout is definitely one to watch for because it will sneak up on you. All right, for me, the most jarring thing about the quarter system is I think relates to like what it means to be a, at UCSD or to be at a university in general. And it's um, like with the campus culture and like what the, what it means to be like a, a, a university student in the quarter system, like the quarter system plus being at UCSD comes with like certain like expectations and sometimes you just got to like, you just have to like understand that you're, 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 you're human and you can only take on so much. So um, I think also like, I think when you're kind of feeling overwhelmed, I think the, part, the most important thing to do is like get in contact with the people that can like make the difference is like, I would say like, you know, getting in contact with like the professors, we keep you going through it in contact with people that can help you uh, get resources, um, you know, because the course system and the course system now via Zoom or be online, it's it's just as rough or even more rough just because like you don't have like, like that, like coming home and then going to school type like situation where you like leave stuff to go to school and like focus on your school and like progress and like working on all your stuff on campus or something like that and then coming back home just to like relax you kind of don't get that so i think just finding like your space at home where you can focus on school and then um you know finding different other spots in, around your place to like just like relax and take some downtime um is something to also just to keep in mind especially because i know a lot of a lot of us especially for me it's something that i had and I to get like used to is like, you know, being on school online, like being on a chair, on Zoom lectures, like most of, most, most of the day. So, um, and it can get draining. So I think right now, just find like your spot and like um, make that like you're like, I'm gonna get stuff done today's spot, you know? And this is coming from advice from Giselle. So shout out to Giselle for that, because she helped me out. I love that. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to the next question. This might just need one response, but please correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, so the next question that we have is, is there someone I could talk to about making sure I register for the right classes? Yes. Um, there's actually two people that you're gonna have to talk to for that. Um, so one year, so like at UCSD, we have a dual advisor system. So you have your major advisor. So all y'all um, have a major here. And that department has an undergraduate advisor. They're gonna make sure like you're, they're gonna run through pretty much like what your quarter by quarter plan is. They all kind of have like a general two year plan for transfer. And that can get edited based on a case by case basis. So like seeing where you're at specifically. So first go to your major advisor. They're gonna make sure like you have some sort of plan to fill out the, all your major requirements at the time that you're gonna be here. And that'll kind of give you a ballpark as to what your time degree is, what your graduation date is. Second part, 
you have your college advisor. So um, remember, like all of us introduce our college. So the college advisor helps you navigate university requirements, whatever your college requirements are. Like for like for Caesar and I, we're both year students, so we have the year college writing program. That's like pretty much like the thing that we have to fulfill. Um, I know like for ERC, there's like MMW, for Rebel, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> there's just, yeah, there's a lot. Um, but yeah, every college kind of has their requirements. Um, but your college advisor is gonna, well, they're first gonna take your, uh, all the stuff from your major, right? So your major quarter by quarter plan that you, you just came from your major advisor with, they're gonna take that and then they're gonna fill in some blank spots for like writing requirements, general education requirements, any sort of university level requirements that you need to graduate and actually get your degree. So there, from there, then you have your full, like this is everything that I'm gonna be doing while I'm at UCSD. And like I said, that can change. Don't be like married to a plan. Um, yes, cause like life happens, things change. So. Don't worry about that. The main thing is to be in contact with those two people, at least like twice a quarter, I would say, at least. Um, but as long as you're staying in contact with them, like at least twice a quarter, um, you'll be, you'll have a, a solid sense of like what you need to be doing from a class perspective. Also, um, if you need to change majors, I changed my major went from bioengineering to management sciences. So that was a huge, huge shift. Um, but yeah, just having like your advisors to kind of help you navigate all that kind of stuff um, is super duper important. But just remember there are two of them. So major first, then college advisor second. And then once you put those two together, you'll have your full plan. Thank you, Malik. That was wonderful. Okay, I hope you all got that. And we have this as a recording as well, so you can hear this all over again if needed. The next question that we do have is kind of open-ended, so I'd love to hear from all of our transfer success peer coaches. What disposition makes a new student become successful in UCSD? Well, I can go first. As what we said all the time, what is our mission and vision for the trade and transfer hub is here to support you from academic way, from your like even your UCSD way. So for this position, not like all the peer coaches here, we are kind of friend with you. We are here to support you to be better success on your academic way. If you have like any question about the uh, academic stuff, we might can't give you directly answer, but we will give you the correct route to be success to fix the problem. Also, if you have like any question about like UCSD life. We also can share some experience of us, just like this webinar, we uh, like this Zoom meeting, we share our experience. Just we want to make sure you are success on your academic way and your personal life with UCSD. Yeah. Um, let's see, to kind of piggyback. So resourcefulness is super duper important. Um, there's a lot of resources at UCSD. Um, I will say one more thing is probably like uh, tenacity and persistence. Those are super duper important just to like, there's a lot going on at UCSD. Um, and I know like from my experience, like, like I, the college I came from, like university I came from, Xavier, is super small, like 5,000 students, like, you know, give or take a few hundred. So, like, I knew all my professors, all my professors knew me. How about, like, let's start from there. So it was a lot easier to, like, stay on track because, like, there were, just, like, because there were so much fewer students, um, like, professors would check on you, people would check on you, so it was easy. Um, here at UCSD, there's a lot going on. So the biggest thing is like, there's the support is there, the resources are there, but you definitely have to make it a point to like, 
first advocate for yourself. Um, if you, you have to like, kind of like take that first step and be like, congratulations to all y'all. Um, you have all officially taken that first step by connecting with us. So um, just keep doing what you're doing. Um, like seek out information, seek out resources, seek out support, and you'll be fine. Um, the, real, the really big problem is, is like letting um, situations snowball because the quarter system moves really fast and because it moves really fast and like there are kind of like these deadlines that we kind of operate off of, the longer you wait with the situation, the less and less your options become as far as like course correction or getting that resolved. So the biggest thing is like really being adamant about your success here and really being adamant about getting like connected to support. Um, things move really quickly. There's a really big like um, kind of like stress current at UCSD. So if you kind of think about yourself as like, like um, a piece of driftwood on a river, like if you're just by yourself, it's easy to just kind of get swept off with the tide. So like the biggest thing is like trying to tether yourself to as many sources of support as you can. And by doing that, when you kind of build out that network for yourself and just like make those connections, that's gonna be the biggest thing that's gonna help you like withstand like that huge tide of UCSD. Um, and that'll really like kind of ground you and that'll, it's gonna be what really like is most instrumental. So um, yeah, just being really persistent and adamant about your own success and survival here is like essential. So the fact that all of y'all classes haven't even really begun yet and y'all are already like seeking out information, you're ahead of the learning curve, I promise. So um, just keep doing what you're doing and y'all will be fine. So to yeah. add on to that, oh, sorry, Kyle. Uh, no, uh, go ahead, yeah. So to add to that, I think you gotta persevere. You gotta persevere at UCSD because um, Things are always getting thrown at you. I, I think, you know, uh, you know, when COVID happened, like we were, we were all thrown up. We were, everything was just like switched up so quick. You had to like, you know, just like, for lack of a better term, you just had to figure it out. And um, perseverance is, I think, what could like all get us, could get us, get us through like whatever we are going through. Um, but to add on to that, um, persever perseverance comes with like also like finding, getting what Malik said, you know, finding being resourceful, but also like relying on a community, but also like being real, like you just gotta like be real with like your professors, gotta be real with yourself, gotta be real with like the people who you're in contact with, because if you're trying to put up a front, no one's gonna know what's going on, and you're just gonna be like, so I, I didn't know anything about this. So you can't really expect people to like, you know, read your mind or something. So I think um, with all that said, um, you know, uh, we are here to like, you know, pick your brain a bit and like help you out with whatever you need. Um, that's pretty much it for my end on what disposition yeah, I 100% agree with everyone. It's just for me, just that like, don't think you are alone. I, I know like, especially with COVID, you're at home and you're just like dealing with your computer and it seems really lonely. And you're thinking like, no one's going through the same thing as you do, but they are. And, 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 and don't feel bad about that. And reach out to people, reach out for help, uh, reach out to us. Like, you don't even need any like having any questions to a book appointment, you can just, you know, book appointment with us. We can talk to you about your, uh, your lives and we can just chat, um, have a chat and just have a sense of, you know, like there are other people on, um, like in UCSD dealing with the same thing as you, you, you are. And, um, also one tip that if you, if you feel like participating, you want to reach out, like network in your class, you know, I think Zoom has an amazing uh, thing that we can chat while the, professor is talking like it's it's not rude anymore you know like if, if in class you were talking loudly to another person that would be rude but now on zoom you can chat with other people and make some jokes you know make make yourself known like yeah i'm here you know so um i think that's a good way to reach out and then you know like 
for like last years, um, for the some last years, it's really hard for me because I commute so far to, to school. I don't feel like I want to go to uh, the professor office hours, but now you have Zoom and it's like, if, if the appointment is at four, you can go, like you can wake up at 3.59 p.m. and you can still make it to the appointment. So take that, you know, opportunity of Zoom, of Zoom University. I know it sucks, but it has its good points and just network, network, network. Again, like reflecting Malik's uh, point and Cesar point is reach out, um, make some friends, and if if everything fails, I guess you guys you guys can always come back to us, and we will be your friends and refer to uh, to other resources to help you out. So don't forget that, okay? All right, so I just wanted to encourage all of our students who are here today with us to continue posting questions because we have some peer coaches who are moderating and answering it on your behalf. The next question that we have is, when do transfers get an internship and tips on how to prepare for that? And as we're in this question as well, if you all have any personal experience with getting involved in research, uh, please mention that in the in the presentation. Thank you so much. I can speak on this. So when do transfer get an internship? You could start off the bat. You can like get involved, you can get an internship off the bat. I, um, we have a program called the Academic Internship Program, um, which basically you could um, apply for various internships and they will apply to you as a um, credit. They'll be, they'll be for credit. So some, some might be paid, some are taken for credit. It just depends on what you apply for. But the academic internship program is a really solid source of like finding out internships that speak to you, that um, you're inspired to get into. Um, for me, I was more on the research aspect. So to answer the research aspect of it, I got into two programs. Like I went to one, one program over the summer called the Trail Summer Research Program. Um, and we, we did like a bunch of, uh, I had a cohort, um, I got paid, I got, I got for, for trails, it's the highest paying research program at UTSD that I know of. Um, so, you know, getting paid to do research on what you're passionate about is something that is like very like, wow, like this speaks to me and I get to get paid for it. Like that is something that I should take advantage of. Um, but also what's cool about shells is it could, doesn't have to be like specific research. It could be like experimental. Like it could be like, it could be something profound. It doesn't have to be like scholarly, scholarly this, scholarly that. It can be whatever you want to make out of it. So I, I think trails was like a really um, solid research program. Another thing um, I, for another research program that I recently got admitted into, um, they, sometimes offer an internship opportunity when you're in that program. So sometimes just like already like getting involved in the research that already exists on your campus or on your major, they already like have resources that need the help. So then they'll just connect you and be like, hey, since you're doing this already, you can get involved in this internship and get more credit for it and you can just add it onto your resume. And it's usually like the, around the same amount of work just because um so to answer to elizabeth's pro, uh, question it was part of my major um it was under the sociology department it was it's called the mexican field immigration program so um they had they work with a, a law firm and they offered me an internship opportunity just because i was already working under the same like program and since they already worked together they just asked for like the extra help and um, yeah, so if anyone wants to back off of that, I know I said a lot, um, but it's really like to stand it and my thought, it's really just depends on what you're passionate about. Like I said, um, another thing to emphasize is networking. The only reason I got into these programs is because I knew someone who knew someone or they, I knew because, or because I knew them, they helped me apply or get into these programs. Um, not to say that I'm not qualified to do these programs. It was just like, you know, it was like the stepping stone of how to like navigate getting into these research programs or internship opportunities. 
Um, but yes, that's, that's my two cents. Um, let me, I'm gonna just uh, piggyback a little bit. So let's see, you can get a research opportunity in your first quarter and I am living proof. Um, so the biggest thing uh, about research, uh, one, you're in one of the greatest places in the country to be interested in research. We are an R1 research institution. Um, yeah, we win a bunch of awards all the time. But um, yeah, networking is super duper key. So somebody asked about how do you pick uh, who to reach out to? So the biggest thing with that, this is also why it's good to reach out to your major advisor because they can give you some insight. But it, so first, uh, the biggest thing you can do, um, go to your major or your department website. And there's almost always a tab especially at UCSD, that's like either research or faculty. And you go to one of those tabs and literally all the faculty members have like a little bio description about like research interests and what they're kind of doing. And then if you click on their name, it'll direct you to their website. They'll have a bunch of publications and stuff you can look at. So that's the step one. Um, that can kind of give you just like a broad idea about like what they kind of do, what kind of work they do. Um, from there, you can, so like for me, so like when I came in as bioengineering, um, I just looked at the faculty list and I kind of saw what people were doing, what kind of projects people were doing. And then from there, I saw that there was one specific lab that I was really interested in. So I looked at that, I went to that professor's website specifically and looked at their list of articles or their list of publications or their list of research projects. And I was like, okay, these kind of sound interesting to me. Let me, so I read, I read up on them a little bit and then I sent an email, hey, Dr. So-and-so, um, I see you've been working on these types of projects and these projects really interest me. Um, I would love to talk to you more about these projects and see if you have any uh, opportunities that I could get involved with. Um, so the other thing when, Every campus opens back up. Uh, I took advantage of a thing called coffee with a professor. So pretty much the campus gave me a voucher for a coffee shop on campus for me and that professor to sit down over coffee. I pretty much just created an interview for myself, I brought my resume, and then I, I gave it to the professor. And then the professor was like, wow, this student is amazing. You're amazing. We, we would love to uh bring you in in our lab so kind of just going about it like that of course we don't can't really like coffee with a professor right now through the covid but the biggest thing take advantage of office hours and reach out through email once you have seen like okay this person's research sounds interesting just the simple fact of being able to cite some of their research one it's going to flatter them and then two it shows interest and it shows specific interest and if you can do all that work and then come with all that work done and not just come to a professor with, hey, I, I heard you do research, what's research? Um, if you can come with like some, a little bit specified of an interest, that takes out so much work because then either they're gonna have something for you directly with them or they know somebody who does. And then from there, they're gonna connect you where they, where research one institution, professors love having people to help them with their research. So like, as long as you can show interest and show that you have some direction and that you're gonna like take, you're like, you can kind of get yourself started and kind of do some of that work beforehand on your own. And you can kind of show that initiative, like that'll take you wherever you need to go. Like we're all, we're undergrads. They're not expecting you to already have like a thesis under your belt or already have like a publication under your belt. They're not expecting any of that. But if you can kind of at least like show them, hey, I can at least do some work to see what I'm interested in, and I have an idea about what I'm interested in, they'll take that and they'll do the, they'll run with you the rest of the way. So that would be my my advice as far as like getting involved with research. Um, also, take advantage of the grants. Um, that was one thing that I learned that I'm really grateful for. I learned how to grant write, and I learned how to write myself for grants. So like, there's a lot of money in research. So get your bread, uh, please. 
unless you're gluten intolerant, and, you know, get get your sustenance. But yeah, definitely get paid for what you're doing. Um, there's a lot of paid opportunities that you can qualify for. So those are super helpful to also just provide some extra incentive to pursue your passions. But yeah, definitely take advantage of the opportunities that are here. And you can definitely do it in your first quarter. Um, so don't like be intimidated by that. Like, I'm, oh, I'm new here. I don't really know anybody here. Like, don't let that stand in your way. Um, as long as you like have that initiative and that passion and that drive, and you can showcase that, that'll take you where you want to go. Real quick, because we're running out of time. I think to answer one of the questions is how do I get involved in research as an income transfer with OECGPA? I I struggled through this because some of the programs that I was applying for did need that, but I would recommend getting in contact with the director of the program you're applying to and see if you could use your transfer GPA to like advocate for what opportunity you want to get into. Um, that's like just like my quick advice on that, just because I went through that and I was kind of like struggling to get in a research program off the bat because I also wanted to get involved up, get involved in my first quarter. And um, so yeah. Get in contact with the director. See, you can uh, advocate for yourself on that part, just because like sometimes they'll be like, oh, oh well. But if you like, you let, let them know that you're a transfer student, sometimes they'll like use that transfer GP or they just like won't be like taken into consideration and just look at what you're like the content you're providing for them. So yeah. Thank you, Caesar. So we only have time for one last question. So we want to make sure that all of our peer coaches give some of their closing thoughts. I feel like this question can be answered in the chat. And that question is, when should I see a transfer peer coach? And how often should a student reach out to a transfer peer coach? How do I make an appointment? as often as you want, um, or not as often as you want. I think just depending on what the things that you wanna uh, do or like what you're like struggling to get done, that's what we're here for to help you get things done. So um, it's up to you, it's up to all of you just to like see how comfortable you are with like reaching out. Um, we are, we have our weekly we have our weekly meetings, like our weekly like set schedule to help you get, to help all of you out. So it's really up to all of you <laughs> to like see when you want to book, book those appointments. Um, yeah. Um, I just dropped a link in the chat uh, to our website, transferstudents.ucsd.edu. Um, copy that, bookmark it. Um, that'll kind of take you to our scheduling link. That'll also take you to get linked to our forum where you can also ask questions about resources and things of that nature. Um, but yeah, that website is super duper helpful. And our resources page is lit. Like we have all the resources. Like I'm, it's probably one of the best resources page I've ever seen. So definitely utilize that to your advantage. Schedule an appointment on there. Get connected to our forum on there. Follow us on our social medias on there. Yeah, you should. You could might you might as well just set it as your homepage on Google. For real, like it's 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 the source. It's definitely the source for sure. Um, watch your students meet with a peer coach. Um, we are fun. We are resourceful. We are here for you guys. And sometimes we are lonely, you know, doing a lot of documentation work. It's kind of kind of boring. So, you know, meeting with you guys is so much more fun and, you know, talking is so much more fun. <laughs> so please, please, please <laughs> book an appointment. <laughs> we are lonely, <laughs> but and yeah. Also, um, yeah, Sarge, I uh, just want to get, like, get some information with what Ka said, why you should, contact with like uh, period coaching, just like said, I said, we care about you and that is like what our mission. And also, also just say, you want to make friends? Come joining us, we are here for you. We're come be a friend. Just like I can share some, like a quick story. And be, before I be a peer coach, I, ne I never met Malik, but when we made, 
like works together with Funny House. Well, you know, Malik is like really, really helpful. He is really resourceful. So use this way, join us, book, a, book an appointment with, with us. We'll give you the resource you want. Appreciate y'all. Appreciate the love for real. I try. I try my best. Okay, I'm asking one more question that's important for this upcoming quarter. It says, tips for navigating classes that are asynchronous. Set deadlines for yourself. I need to, like, I have deadlines for myself. It's kind of empty right now just because I'm updated it. But you have to set deadlines for yourself or else you just lose track of what you need to get done. That's like the most important. I emphasize setting deadlines for yourself because if you're not, you are, and I'm just like scramble on and just like see whatever your your professors need to get done. But you gotta like, if there's like so much that you need to get done, you gotta set yourself, put yourself deadlines to get stuff done ahead of time. So when the time comes to like, you know, maybe finish it or just like go over it, kind of have a peace of mind. So that's the only thing I would say is like definitely set deadlines for yourself just because I know that's something I had to work on and it's made all of the difference since I started doing it just because having classes on Zoom made me super lazy and not accountable to myself. So deadlines for yourself are important. Thank you all for your time. Thank you all so much for coming. We appreciate you. We are here for you. We welcome you. You matter to us. And we want to wish and send all of our best care uh, to this next upcoming first quarter for the fall. So congratulations to you all for getting admitted. We are so happy to have you here. We are very fortunate to have you all. And we look forward to working with you for the next academic year. So take care, everyone. Bye.